the beginning, there was Mickey. Then came Donald and Bugs. Daffy, Betty, and Porky. Hey, that wasn't in the script. And Tom and Jerry, Tweety and Sylvester, and Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner. But now there's a new tune in town, and his name is Roger Rabbit. And though Roger is influenced by all the cartoon characters before him, there's one difference. This tune lives in the world of humans. My buddy, Betty B, a flower put you'll be. But when I'm done, he'll be so gone to the joker, he will be. How would I categorize this film? Totally new. <laughs> Hopefully. So you've, you've never seen this before, folks. Marker. Action. <laughs> The film is Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the most highly acclaimed movie of the year. <laughs> Bringing Roger and his adventures to life took more than three years. Combining the spirit of Hollywood's past with the technical wizardry of today, this film stands as one of the greatest cinematic achievements ever attempted. <laughs> But tell me, Eddie, is that a rabbit in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? Roger Rabbit is the first cartoon hero in a long while that has both won our hearts, captured our imaginations. In the film, I play one of the humans who gets tangled up in Roger's crazy adventure. I can honestly tell you that working with this rabbit was an adventure in itself. Roger's one special bunny. Join me as we reveal the story behind Roger Rabbit. We will journey back to our childhoods, travel to that crazy place called Toontown, where we'll visit heroes from the past and meet some of our new Toon friends. There are secrets to be told beyond these doors. I'm here! Ah! Roger Rabbit and the Secrets of Toontown, hosted by Joanna Cassidy! <laughs> Did you see that? Nobody takes a wallop like Goofy. It all began with the seemingly simple idea of making a film in which cartoon characters and humans live side by side. What it turned into was one of the largest motion picture productions ever. It took the combined effort of over 700 of the industry's most talented people to bring the film to the screen. And leading the drive was director Robert Zemeckis. And action. With his previous hit films, Romancing the Stone and Back to the Future, Zemeckis had proved he could handle large-scale pictures. But many had claimed that Who Framed Roger Rabbit was a film that no one could pull off. Those are the only films worth doing, are the ones that are risky. So, I mean, I decided to spend two years of my life on this film because it's challenging. To create the zany world in which Roger lives, Zemeckis looked to the past for his inspiration. For he and executive producer Steven Spielberg, the film was a tribute to the pioneers of animation who came before. You know, I and a lot of my generation have been influenced profoundly by the films of Walt Disney, especially the films from the 30s, 40s, and right to the 50s. And I really feel that this is a movie that we're making for Walt. As a source of inspiration for a generation of filmmakers, Walt Disney is regarded by many as the premier innovator of his day. In the 1930s and 40s, Disney made screen stars of Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and a host of other cartoon characters. It was the golden age of animation. From other studios, other cartoon greats were born. Betty Boop and Woody the Woodpecker were every bit as popular as Bogart and Bacall. Each of the studios of that period had its own unmistakable trademark. Disney Studios was known for its beautiful animation and believable characters who touched our hearts. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the first animated feature-length film ever, is still as powerful and moving as when it was released 50 years ago. He was always striving for believability. Even though these were funny little dwarfs and so forth, people came out of that theater crying and blowing their noses. A simple cartoon. And that was the believability that Walt got. One, two, three, four. 
Over at Warner Brothers, the animators took a slightly different approach with their characters. Okay, Wabbit. Now I got you. What's up, Dad? Insulting my integrity! Hey, Saxo! Of all the cartoon characters of the period, none seemed more sparked with life than those created by the animators at Warner's. We realized that you can't make a picture about somebody you don't understand. So, Davy Duck is me, and he's you, and he's everybody else. Because what you do is you go down inside yourself and find, find that personality and bring it to the surface and spread it out. Yeah. Over at MGM, former Warner animator Tex Avery was creating some of animation's funniest cartoon shorts. Avery's trademark was outlandish physical gags. Even though these cartoon classics were made 40 and 50 years ago, they still had a profound influence on the makers of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Roger, Baby Herman, and the other new tune characters, Zemeckis used a recipe that called up the best from animation's past. We always wanted the Disney technique, the beautiful Disney animation, the great Warner Brothers characterization, yes. and Tex Avery humor, you know, dynamite down your pants type stuff. Roger Rabbit has much in common with his animated ancestors, there's one major difference that sets him apart. Roger lives in the real world of humans. Wouldn't you know? As with all great cartoon characters, Roger has a good sense of humor, but it's his human qualities that we are most attracted to. Whether it's comedy or, or pathos or fear, the idea was I wanted to give the cartoon characters true human emotion. Roger Rabbit behaves in a very sincere, believable way, like a Disney hero. But then he's capable of going into these sort of extreme things, crazy things. And then he'll return back into this sincere, worried rabbit. Thanks. I needed that. Although Roger is a very complex rabbit, his outlook on life is actually quite simple. My philosophy is this. If you don't have a good sense of humor, you're better off dead. But this is not just the story of a rabbit. It's the tale of a partnership between private detective Eddie Valiant, played by Bob Hoskins, and Roger Rabbit, a cartoon star in trouble. Let's forget it. There's nobody here. Is that it, or are you scared? Please! Me scared? Don't be ridiculous. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is the most ultimate buddy movie that you could imagine. It's uh, a true unity of opposites type dramatic story. You do hate me. Otherwise, you wouldn't have yanked my ears all those times. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I yanked your ears. Although working with Toons was a first for Hoskins, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was not the first film in which Toons and humans appeared together. In fact, the idea of combining cartoon characters and live actors is almost as old as animation itself. Of the earliest animated films, Max Fleischer's Out of the Inkwell series was one of the most popular. Fleischer's Coco the Clown was never content to stay on the artist's pad and made frequent journeys into the real world. Likewise, the artist on occasion found himself placed in the world of animation. <laughs> 